Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord Modded and our companion focus playthrough and obviously we're now playing with an army that is mostly comprised of companions. Okay, so we have now entered the smithy. I've been doing a little bit of smithing myself just to give us a little bit of extra experience I suppose, maybe get us another level up and so on. And you may be seeing a bunch of messages coming across the screen right now that basically say new smithing part unlocked, yes. So I had a wide variety of things left over in my inventory and I thought to myself okay let me just smelt a bunch and see what I get and I have apparently gained some really nice, well, really nice parts as you can see right here so i'm actually going to be creating some two-handed swords for no for no reason okay so i'm not selling them i'm not doing anything with them basically i'm just gonna leave them in my inventory i basically just want the experience from crafting them and obviously i mean you can see here we're not getting a huge amount because i don't think i have any um any focus points in smithing at the moment at all which is obviously a big uh, big issue and a big drawback on that but yeah, but yeah yeah look at that as you can see I have um, and actually not a bad learning rate but the learning rate is obviously much worse than what you would otherwise expect at this point but we're just going to basically um, do this and uh, I am going to I think I think later on I might create a companion that is really really good at smithing and I'm talking about super good at smithing because obviously every single time they level up through distinguished service a uh, particular unit is going to gain almost 200 skill points in whatever we decide which is obviously very very powerful indeed so anyway we're just going to be increasing our smithing once more and I think I'm actually going to go for another point in endurance actually wait a minute mm. Yeah, no, no, okay, apparently I'm not going to be putting another point in Endurance, because as you can see, there is a perk in the tree of smithing itself that does increase your Endurance by one, so that is basically pointless. It's also pointless for me to put a point in Vigor or Control as well. I mean, obviously it depends on what we want to go for, because you can actually get Control or Vigor in the smithing tree too, which is kind of amusing. So I guess well, I'm just going to put another point in cunning then, I guess. And then we're just gonna move on. But um, yeah, so generally that's what I wanted to do. And I actually wanted to show you how much we would get from this. Yeah, they've normalized the prices as you can quite clearly tell. They've normalized the prices. And in my opinion, that's fantastic. I think that's really great because that means that you know, you're no longer able to get a massive amount of cash just by smithing and it's much more realistic now in my opinion because obviously before you would sell one two-handed sword for a hundred thousand or something like that which is obviously completely ridiculous but I think this is actually not as ridiculous because it is a tier 6 weapon. You can see that. It's a, it's a tier 6 weapon. It's got decent stats. It hasn't got the best stats of all time or anything like that. But I could definitely see a lord going to the finest smithy in the land and saying, Hey, can you give me a sword? I have about, you know, I don't know, 15,000 gold to spend or something like that. Because to some lords, 15,000 gold is really, well, nothing. So in my opinion, I think that's much more realistic and much more fun as a result. Because if you want to role play as a merchant or a smith of some kind, you're going to have a much easier time of things. I mean, maybe not an easier time of things to buy the entirety of Calradia, but that's the reason why they have left all of the other versions of the game still accessible through the beta branches. So you can go there if you want to, and you can play previous versions. And you can buy everything you want basically you know that's pretty cool right so yeah anyway i want you to join my party there we go hopefully she's gonna join and then we will be able to uh gear her up i suppose anyway let's actually move on here oh yeah mm, someone mentioned actually something very very um well, should we say relevant to the situation with our caravans and things like that i mean obviously at the moment caravans are not really necessary because we already have everything has a price unlocked but before that all of our companions were being preyed upon by well pretty large stacks of bandits because obviously i have that mod that increases the the size of them i mean obviously you know that kind of 
it kind of makes sense that it would be more difficult for them. Anyway, I'm actually going to do uh, battering ram, siege tower, standard sort of thing. And we're, this is a this is a pretty harsh fight. This is a pretty harsh fight for us. Now, I know, I know there's a bit of a difference of opinion in the comments about what we should do and, and how we should, um, you know, proceed with everything at the moment. So should I continue to have an army like this? Should I continue to, um, you know, have more units in my own army? Because obviously we don't want to be defeated, right? We don't want to be defeated. And I'm very purposefully putting myself in a situation where it might be possible for the enemy to eliminate us if they are significant enough in strength. But you've also got to bear in mind that I don't want this to be, uh, shall we say, I don't want it to be inevitable that we will achieve victory every single time because obviously beforehand it was um well it wasn't easy but i would definitely say that it was much simpler to achieve victory than it is going to be now and we're going to see how that goes because obviously as you can tell oh we might have some issues oh oh wait 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 no 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 can i wait a minute jump yeah, there we go. We made it. Can you believe it? Wow, I had no idea that that was even possible. I actually thought I was going to fall off there for a real quick second. I know that it's a lot a lot easier to do that with Imperial uh, Imperial Thieves, but doing that with uh, Azurai, good luck, because usually the, the battlements are quite a bit more, mm, shall we say, uneven and a little bit rocky, and uh, Imperials are obviously much more uniform, so... Yeah, that was the reason why I was a little bit dubious about that. But it seems like we're actually doing pretty well here. Um, our small elite force of units are doing nicely. I am not sure whether I should jump out here. I was thinking that I would jump out, but I'm going to just relax for a real quick second. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, we haven't lost anyone just yet. I mean, we've lost 13 people, but obviously 13 is now a pretty significant number, if you think about it. Because we only have, what, 83 or something like that so you have to bear that in mind if we are actually going to be achieving victory in any one of these towns for example because the towns are obviously going to have much larger garrisons they're going to have upwards of 400 500 units at once and uh, hopefully it's going to be a little bit more tense you know a little bit more tense a little bit more entertaining as well and uh, we'll see what we can do in those situations when they arise let me see if i can maybe do a little bit of damage with my bow. Oh yeah, also I have actually changed my um, my loadout for a lot of my companions. So basically anyone that has a ranged weapon, I have taken their mount from them and I've locked the slot. So now they will no longer be able to uh, ride horses. In my opinion, that is basically the only thing that we can kind of do. And uh, let's actually get this guy... Um Wait a minute, where's smithing? There it is. Yeah, let's get this guy being the smith. Uh, he has 175 in smithing. Not entirely sure if that's... Is that is that good enough? Mm, maybe it's not good enough. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Anyway, I'm actually thinking to myself that I won't take these prisoners, but I'm thinking maybe I should, because then our improved garrison can possibly recruit them over time. We're going to show mercy, take the thief, improved garrison gonna go in here where, where is this again this is uh medany castle right yeah i think so and let's put this to 250 or so and then we'll put those at tier three that sounds good to me and then we'll put these in here there we are all right that so that is looking pretty fantastic now i'm just gonna wait here for some time just in case there might be a retaliation relatively fast and we have now reached 175 in steward as well so i'm looking forward to sp spending that perk point Let's have a look. Morale bonus from having diverse food is doubled. Okay, I don't really care about that too much. Reduce food consumption of parties during the siege. Ah, uh, yeah, all of these things are, in my opinion, not that useful because we are not the quartermaster of our party. And also, um, according to someone, I think I, I think someone commented a while ago on episode two or three or something like that when i talked about it initially uh the governor perks right so the governor thing that actually does not apply to the player unless you assign yourself as the governor or you, you assign a particular companion as the governor 
And I, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised, actually. I'm kind of surprised that that's how it works because I would have expected if you are the owner of a particular thief and it is ungoverned, in other words, if a companion is not the governor or whatever, then I would have expected the default setting for that perk to be that you as the player would gain that benefit. You know what I mean? From the governor perk. So now it's it's a bit weird to me for that not to be the case because I don't think... Oh, look at that. Liana has gotten pregnant. Okay, fantastic. There we go. Our first heir is on the way. Anyway, point is, I'm not entirely sure how that's going to go because I, I personally think that governor perks should apply to the player. I don't think that the, the benefit of these governor perks is overwhelming. I don't think that they are super strong or anything like that. I think they're decent, you know, I think they're they're relatively well balanced. And I personally don't think that they're really going to affect the course of the entire game if the player is awarded the uh, the ability to utilize these. You know what I mean? It doesn't really you know, it's neither here nor there, basically. You know, it's kind of one of those things where you think to yourself, oh, look at that, I can gain 10% more food or 10% more security or whatever. And you just think, oh, okay, well, that's a nice nice bonus, but it's certainly not something that is going to break the bank, so to speak. Anyway, Thule is besieging Ukbar Castle at the moment. Hopefully he's actually going to be done with that quite soon. And I'm going to move on. We've got to be a bit careful here. My forces are all maxed out, as you can see. That's pretty nice. There's Liena. I hope that she will not die. She is pregnant at the moment, so it would be preferable for her to live. <laughs> I mean, obviously. And uh, yeah, we're going to try and take Iacus now. Why not? Let's, uh, let's, go f let's go all out, right? Let's go all out and see what happens. Okay, so we're going to go once again for the same thing. And I'm thinking, actually, you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna build a. I'm gonna build two fire ballistas. Medini Castle. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. You can take that if you want to, sir. Ah, they. Mm, they have. They have been defeated. Okay. Yes. So a couple of people have been defeated right there. Okay. So I'm gonna. There we go. Okay. Fantastic. That is exactly what I wanted to do. I was going to just wait until the two ballistas were built. And now we're going to go in there. All right. So we are outnumbered, outgunned, and I'm not entirely sure how this is going to go. But I'll tell you something. If we do end up achieving some kind of defeat or suffering some kind of defeat, rather, then I'll go back to the drawing board and I'll see what I can do about that. Because obviously having a defeat, that's obviously not something that we want to see. I mean, I know that some people might want to see that because, uh, you know, it's challenging, right? It's challenging and that, that's, that's all very well and good. However, we do not want to see defeats every single time we set out into battle, right? Because <laughs> that's going to get tiresome as well. So it's one of those things, you know, it's kind of a... A bit of a difficulty to balance those two um, those two extremes out because otherwise it's literally 100% victories or 100% defeats. We don't want either one of those, and generally we always want there to be some kind of jeopardy because if there's jeopardy, then that means there's fun, and then fun is exactly what everyone wants, right? Yeah, that's exactly what everyone wants. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can I? Yes, there we go. Got him. Nice. Hit that guy too. For some reason, I can't hit this guy to save my life. There we go. We got him. Oh, I can't hit that guy. He's way too entrenched behind the wooden slats over there.
right, so how are our forces doing? Oh, it seems like my battering ram... Oh no, my battering ram has been destroyed. That's fantastic. Okay, great. Okay, I guess that means that I'm going to have to get the siege ladders up and running, and then I'm going to have to go up here. Okay, this is... This is not good, okay? This is, this is not good at all. I think we might have some issues here. I'm gonna have to help my forces actually fight now. I can't mess around, you know what I mean? Like, usually, if I go into a siege and I have a relatively strong army and I think to myself, oh yes, I, I have a pretty good army, I think I'll probably achieve victory here, you know? I mean, using my infinite wisdom, because, I mean, let's face it, I have I have experienced quite a few sieges. I know I'm obviously joking about infinite wisdom, but still, the point is, my experience would tell me in those situations that I'm probably going to be okay, you know, I'm probably going to do all right. But in this case, I actually have no clue. I really do not know whether my companions will be able to achieve victory in these situations. Uh, so far, everything seems to be kind of even at the moment. Ow, getting shot multiple times does not help. Alright, so something is going well. And it seems like our push into... What? How did he kill himself? Did you see that? You see the death messages up on the top right? Oregand the Little managed to eliminate himself. I'm not entirely sure how that's even possible, but apparently he did it. Good work, sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of interesting. All right. But it seems like we have achieved victory with 37 losses, no deaths. I'm very surprised. <laughs> I am very surprised. We are indeed playing with realistic. Do bear that in mind. We are playing with realistic death chance. And I also have, uh, I believe, slightly increased the death chance. What did I say about that? Did I say, did I say it, I, I'd increase the death chance or did I say that I'd increase the damage taken? Either way, uh, my people have much higher chances than they used to to... Uh, to die because obviously I think they have one percent chance usually isn't that the default um, default uh, percentage I'm actually not sure what the default percentage is but all I know is that they have a much higher percentage now I think they have four or five percent so do bear that in mind anyway there we go Vlandian Bannonite and a Vlandian Sharpshooter sounds pretty good to me we're gonna go for athletics uh, scouting tactics, I, I don't really know. Uh, we're just going to do the same thing with that guy as well. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go and speak to the uh, Vlandian sharpshooter. And we're going to have to say to him, hey, I, uh, I kind of need you to um, not, not equip a horse, please. You know, I'm kind of going to have to say that to him. Okay, so hello there, sir. I would like you to not equip a horse. There we go. And we will allow them to equip themselves. Oh, yes, and obviously Liena, we, we did not equip her in um, anything good, apparently. So, yes, she has now upgraded her stuff. And we are now going to be placing a whole bunch of money in here. And now I'm... Um, oh, yeah. Mm. Okay, so here's the thing. Obviously, if you if you think about this, from what I can currently tell... I personally don't think we're going to be able to achieve victory in a defense against someone like the army that's currently roaming around. Do you, do you know that you know that guy, Shimra, Shimra's army or whatever his name is? I don't think we're going to be able to achieve victory against that guy. Because you could see here, we literally took 37 casualties. And that, I mean, to be fair, that was that was during a siege attack which is a little bit different but i wouldn't be surprised if he's gonna come over here after medini castle and attempt to do something to take uh Iacus back which is something i would definitely not blame him about anyway i'm actually going to be um oh wow we have to pay we have to pay him are you serious ah okay you know what i'm gonna actually do this all right 
I'm actually going to do this. And there's a good reason for that. Obviously, um, a bunch of my people were taken prisoner. We've just made war with the Batanians. I really don't mind paying 3000 or so every single day. That That is going to add up to quite a significant amount of cash. But just think about the strategic benefit of what we just did. We have literally walked into Azerai territory and we have now taken a bunch of their stuff. And now they can't do anything against us. And now we have to very quickly turn about and make our way over to Batanian territory. And this actually is really cool too, because this basically keeps our enemies kind of fresh. You know what I mean? Oh dear. Oh no. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, yeah, this might be problematic. Anyway, uh, defensive. Defensive. We are going to put every single person on defensive at the moment. Bidal is, have to, is having to walk back there. And bear in mind that while this is happening, Improved Garrison is doing its thing. You know, Improved Garrison is down there at Ascar, down there at Iakis, and uh, is, is continually recruiting units. And that's exactly what we want them to do. We want them to recruit units. We want them to uh, recruit and uh, convert prisoners. And we want them to do all that wonderful stuff and eventually the garrisons there are going to be great. And then when the Azerai inevitably declare war against us once again, we're gonna have a much easier time of things, or at least I hope that we will have a much easier time. Anyway, we have not lost anyone so far, and we now have definitely over 60 companions. Oh yeah, someone, someone actually mentioned, someone uh, I think asked, why 60? All right. Here's the thing. Um, I'm not sure how to explain that really because I I didn't actually um, <laughs> I didn't decide for there to be sixty companions. I literally just had sixty, as far as I'm aware. Uh, isn't that isn't that how many companions I had at the time? Yeah, yeah. I think I've gained about five or four companions or something like that. So yeah, that that was not my intention to have sixty only. I literally just wanted to well. Uh, <laughs> make an army with 60 companions and that's what I did so yeah there you go anyway we are now going to go into Charis here oh look at that Atalon is actually here fantastic it's it maybe about time that we welcome him back to the fold isn't it yeah it's probably a good idea to do so and we are going to get some fire catapults built as well I would very much like to get some uh, additional siege because I don't know whether you've noticed, but actually having some additional ranged siege when you go into the, you know, into the battle itself is actually quite useful because that, that, that enables you a pretty significant amount of killing power or killing potential. And obviously, if you're able to eliminate some of the enemy's forces without having to step foot inside the battlements, that's kind of a that's kind of a win already, right? That's kind of a pretty pretty decent advantage to have. Anyway, we're going to what? Wait a minute. What is what is this? Is this a texture problem? I think that seems like a texture problem, doesn't it? <laughs> that is actually kind of amusing, to be honest. Blue hay or purple hay, right here. Yes, indeed. I have no idea what color it's supposed to be or what texture it's supposed to be, but apparently it's broken, whatever it is. But um, yeah, okay, well, interesting, nevertheless. Okay, so I'm just going to speed things up real fast. I'm going to go over to this little hut and I'm going to go inside. And wow, that's actually amazing that you can even go inside, to be honest. I thought to myself, I would probably not be able to do that, but apparently I am able to, which is really cool. And it kind of makes me a bit sad that there's nothing in there. Because you know how in Warband there was like that, um, oh, there was that that uh, that secret chest that you could find in Rivercheg, right? Wasn't it Rivercheg? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, if you walked around the streets, you could find a secret chest, and that would have some strange armor inside it. And I always thought that was super cool. Was that a part of a mod? Or was that actually native? Because now I can't remember. I, uh, it's been been such a long time. Anyway, the point is, that's the kind of cool thing that I'd like to see in those kinds of situations where you're literally well, just kind of running around randomly and um, you happen across some shack or some structure somewhere 
And then all of a sudden you think, oh, look, there's a chest. And now I can open this chest and maybe I can, you know, take something out of it, like a weapon or whatever. I think that would be really fun. But obviously that is completely up to them, completely up to modding people as well, because no doubt they can add some stuff like that. I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to the, uh, the, the Prophecy of Pendor version uh, for Bannerlord. If they're actually working on that, I have no idea. So don't quote me on it. I have no news in regards to Prophecy of Pendor or any of the well-known mods uh, from Warband. But um, yeah, that's uh, that would be amazing, you know, to actually get an updated version of Pendor. One of my favorite mods ever. And uh, yeah, generally um, that is, I, I would probably say one of the highest quality, if not the highest quality mod you can play for Warband. And I know, I know, you know, that's that's saying a lot, you know, that is, that is actually claiming quite a bit, but I think it is probably the highest quality because it has been in development for such a long period of time. Like, I, I think I can remember playing it back in 2013, I think. I think it was 2013 that I created my first series on, uh, on Pendor. Or was it 2012? It might have been 2012, actually, but I, I don't think so. I think it was 2013. Anyway, point is, yeah, that's the reason why I say that it's it's probably the most polished experience you can have. And uh, they add so much content. You know, there's a huge amount of content added. I mean, it is a total conversion after all. You know, it's a complete total conversion. And they add huge amounts of things. They add quests. They add unit types. They add um, different items, they add factions. I mean, there are completely different factions than what you would normally expect. And I can only imagine what that would be like in Bannerlord, you know, because I mean, let's face it, like just just all, all of this, you know, the improved engine is just going to make everything so, so much, so much better. But of course, it's already great, you know? You can play it right now. I mean, it, the Lunar New Year sale is currently going on on Steam, and uh, I'm not entirely sure if Warband is on sale, but if it is, you should probably pick it up if you don't want to, you know, if you don't want to play Bannerlord, or if you don't want to buy Bannerlord yet, because it's still in early access, then that's obviously understandable. Oh, we, we actually lost three people. Wait a minute, did we lose any companions? No, we didn't lose any companions. Okay, that's actually... Whew, I was a bit worried about that for a, for a real quick second. Anyway, um, but yeah, um, I, I would recommend getting Warband and just installing the latest version of Pendor. It's really easy to install. And um, Warband is... N what? Like, n I think it's like a couple of gigabytes or maybe not even, not even two gigabytes. I think it's very small, the installation for that. So if you have a slower connection, easy. Easy to install it, really not a big deal. Anyway, I'm actually going to take all these prisoners because, well, not prisoners, but I'm going, to, I'm going to rescue all the troops and I will take all the prisoners as well. And we're just going to put them in the uh, put them in the town here. I think that's going to be pretty nice. But um, yeah, Pandora is definitely the mod that I would recommend playing from Warband if you wanted to choose one mod only. There are so many good ones and it's very difficult to decide on just one to play but if i had to start with anyone i would probably start with pendor but highly recommend it if you're a new person to mountain blade in general it's probably not the best idea to start with pendor but if you do start with pendor be aware you have to take your time in that it is very punishing if you let your guard down, and I'd highly recommend not playing it on the highest difficulty at first, I would definitely recommend playing it on a lower difficulty. Oh yes. And uh, don't even get me started on what I actually ended up doing um, when I first started playing it, because uh, here's the thing, when I started playing Warband, I was playing on a, on a lower difficulty, obviously, because I was... Well, I was very bad, you know, I was very bad at the game. I, I would not know how to really fight. I wouldn't know any of these, any, any of these, you know, uh, techniques of fighting. And I would be, well, consistently taking random damage. Yeah, I know, I know. It hasn't changed, right? Yes, it, I know, I know. It hasn't changed at all since then. But um, yeah, I just wanted to say that generally just take your time, have fun with it, you know, because that's... 
after all, what it's all about. Anyway, we have now gained tactical mastery, which is incredible in my opinion. I think this is probably one of the strongest end game perks that you can get, because look at this. It increases simulation damage by 1% for every skill level over 200. We have 276. That means we have a 76% damage increase for simulations. I cannot imagine how much that is. That, that, that is so powerful. That is almost double damage that our units are now doing in simulations, which is crazy good. Anyway, I am going to be uh, setting up the improved garrison real fast. Uh, where, where is this? Charis, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's put that there. Let's do this about 350 or so. Then we'll do this. There we, go. there we go. Okay, that's great. Let's go into the dungeon as well. Gonna place all those prisoners in there. And we can also go into the garrison, amazingly enough, because we do have a bunch of rescued prisoners. And I am going to be placing most of them in there. There we go. Okay, that's great. So... Where do we want to head to next? Well, I think Orticia is probably calling to us at the moment because it is under siege. I'm not entirely sure if there are any of our armies nearby. It doesn't look as though there are, which is a bit weird. Krotor is attempting to attack us, as you can see right there, which is not very nice of him, to be honest. And wow, okay, the Western... What, what, what's going on with the Western Empire? What is, what is going on with these guys? Why do they have so much strength? Look at them. This is crazy. This is actually crazy. They don't, I mean, look at this. They only have five towns and eight castles. We have more than them. And yet they have so many vassals. I mean, look at this. They, they have a very small amount more clans than we do. I mean, generally, I should be able to create some, some new clans, right? Okay, I'm, you know what? I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to do that right now. So let's have a look here. Uh, this guy, I have no idea. Danos. Danos the Butcher. I wish to reward you for your services. All right, so I'm going to be giving you uh, Charis because I literally just gave you... I mean, I literally just took it, so why not? All right, let's, uh, let's name him... Let's name... Uh, name his clan. Janos. Here we go. Danos Janos. Because uh, that's... Um, that's a... Uh, a uh, legendary name from uh, mythology, and um, yeah, it's great. So yeah, there you go. I hope you liked my explanation. All right, so now let's move on to Orticia, and I'm actually thinking they're not going to be able to take this 100%, right? They're not going to be able to take this. I don't think so, at least. Mm, they are, they have a pretty good army. They they actually have a pretty good army. Okay, well, what about the, what about these guys over here? What are we going to do with them? Ooh. Do you think I can fight this? It's highly unlikely, right? I'm actually not entirely sure. I mean, I'm never going to be able to fight Krotor's army. Vidal, can you come over here? Oh, he's actually defending Orticia, which is, I suppose, fine. Hmm. I'm wondering what I should do, because I'm thinking to myself, should I go and defend against one of these armies? Because it feels to me like this is a waste of time. It feels like, why why, why should I bother defending Thraktorai Castle when, I, I mean, especially against such a large army as that? But what I could actually do is I could literally just come back here and then I could just take it in one fell swoop. And it's the same thing with Garan Garantor Castle here. I mean, look at the defense. The defense is actually doing a fantastic job. And you can see here, look at this. They are dying. They are literally dying from this right now. And I could just go straight on in here, which is exactly what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to go straight on in here. We have the garrison on our side as well now, by the way. And now we can take the fight to them, which is exactly what we want to do. Okay. Oh, this is a really nice place to fight, by the way. On the coast. Yeah, what a picturesque place to fight. I like it. All right, so let's just make our way over here. I feel like this is going to be a pretty simple uh, simple fight, but usually those ones are the ones that are the most deceptive. Usually those are the ones that I end up losing a huge amount of units 
in and it would definitely be something I'd like to try and avoid if at all possible. It seems like my archers are doing a fantastic job. Now I'm going to tell my cavalry to charge in. Going to tell my infantry to charge in as well. Bear in mind that most of my infantry are actually part of the garrison. So I would much prefer not to tell them to charge in at this point. But we kind of need to do something. Because otherwise the enemy's cavalry is just going to have free reign against our archers. And I do not want that. Okay, there we go. Shields up. Shields up. Do not want to die. Thank you. Luckily my cavalry is actually coming in and helping us out here, <laughs> a pretty significant amount which is cool. Going to tell everyone to charge in now, mainly because I would like to clean up the rest of these enemies. They are kind of making themselves very, very difficult to eliminate here because they are all spread out quite a lot. And they have a lot of high tier units as well. You can, well, you can quite clearly see that Imperial Elite Cataphracts and Manavliotons all over the place. But it seems like we are going to achieve victory, amazingly enough. I have no idea whether we have lost anyone, by the way. So we're going to have to take a look at the casualty screen after this. I'm sure we're going to be notified before that happens, though. So, yeah. Just cross your fingers that we didn't lose anyone. Maybe you will have seen it before I did. Because I'm obviously not looking all the time at the, uh, at the death feed. But it seems like I don't think we lost anyone. I don't think so. No, it doesn't seem like we lost anyone. Okay, that's actually amazing. I'm, I'm very surprised about that. We actually only only ended up losing four units. It seems like the garrison was the, the main thing that had any kind of significant casualties. Anyway, we're going to be letting most people go once again. As I said before, I would very much like to... Um, not so much... Um, get these people to join so to speak, but more to have the ability to speak to them in a decent manner. In other words, I don't want them to hate us super badly. You know what I mean? That, that, that kind of thing would probably be advisable for the moment. Anyway, let's just put these prisoners in there. They're going to hopefully recruit from the garrison. Charis is now under siege by the Batanians, so we're going to rush over there as well. Krotor is still doing his thing at Thraktorai Castle, which is absolutely fine. He can throw his units against that as much as he wants. And as you can see, the Batanians are attempting to take this. This is obviously not really going to work very well, because as you can see, Mr. Danos Yanos has done a fantastic job already of garrisoning this particular place. Because I have not had control of this for a very long period of time. And you can see here that the militia have already been recruited. I mean, there's a lot of militia there, which is obviously good for the numbers, but not so much good for the combat strength. Because militia, as we all know, are kind of limited in the amount of power that they're going to gain. Because they cannot level up past, what is it, tier 3? I think they can only get to tier 3 or something like that. So, yeah, anyway, Danos is over there. As you can see, he's um, recruiting some people, I suppose. And we're going to see what happens here as well, because I would very much like to see what, what goes down. Ooh, look at that. There we go. 
Fantastic. Bidal. Bidal is doing a fantastic job. Look at that. Yes. He entered battle and he defeated the army that was uh, plaguing Ortizia for this whole time. So that's really, really good. And now we, uh, we basically eliminated two out of three of the Western Empire's uh, vassals, which is, in my opinion, very cool. And that also means, wow, look at that. Their combat strength has taken an absolute nosedive because beforehand their combat strength was 7,000, wasn't it? So like 7,100 or something like that. And now it's 4,500. So they are very, very, very badly off actually. And now we can make peace with them if we want to. And that's going to give us a decent tribute per day. I think I might, you know what I might like to do first? I think I might like to take one of their fiefs beforehand, or maybe a couple of them. I'm thinking Lagata and maybe Hatosia Castle. Maybe we'll take both of those and then we'll make peace or something like that. I'm not entirely sure if the Batanians will allow us to have that luxury though. So I suppose we'll see what happens in upcoming episodes. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.